Hello and welcome to another quick tip video here from Zanata Consulting. My name is Tyler Colt and in this video we're going to be going over 10 free plugins that you can install inside of Zoho Desk to improve the overall usability and functionality of the system. And so before we jump in, I do want to ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below as that really does help us out. Uh, make sure to leave any questions, feedback, or video requests in the comment section below the like button as we do try to read through each and every one of those on a weekly basis. So without any further ado, let's jump on into the walkthrough. So here I am inside of the marketplace here, and I've just gone under the extensions and selected Zoho Desk. The marketplace, of course, is where a bunch of different plugins and extensions are rolled out and supported for various Zoho apps. You know, you can come in here to marketplace.zoho.com, select your application, filter down by any categories, you know, different things that you might be trying to get done and see if there's a little tool or piece of functionality that will work for you. One really interesting thing, though, about the marketplace and specifically the way that Zoho will roll things out for Zoho Desk is that they actually add a lot of features and functionality for Desk as marketplace extensions rather than just kind of putting it into the app natively. My thought has been is that they do it this way because not everybody needs these tools and they want to keep the application as simple as possible for people who might not need some of this functionality. But we did want to make this video just to kind of fly through these 10 awesome plugins that are completely free, made by Zoho, and just rolled out via the extension store. These are in no particular order. You know, I'm just going to go through them in terms of my consistency of using them. We'll jump into the first one here, which is Customer Insights for Zoho Desk. This is one of the most popular, I think, on the marketplace that Zoho has rolled out. Really, the goal here is that from within a particular ticket, you'll be able to see the number of open, on hold, closed tickets, see average response times and see happiness rating scores for that particular contact. So here inside of the screenshots, we can kind of see what this will look like. So I've got a ticket here opened up with a particular person. And over on the left, I can see how many tickets in total they've ever had, how many of them have been closed, how have those response times been, and how are they feeling about this particular interaction with us. Just a nice top-down view of your history of engagement with that customer. Again, one of those things, this is one that I did put this first on purpose because this is probably the most useful out of the bunch. This one is really great. Just being able to see all of this information right away when you open up a ticket, we can see, hey, maybe they've given us some negative ratings lately and we need to go a bit above and beyond here to make sure that this customer stays happy. So a lot of actionable information here. Again, totally free. You can just drop this into your account and it will turn on immediately. Next one here is customer ticket history for Zoho Desk. So a little different than customer insights. The ticket history, rather than showing some of that summary data, like they have 10 open tickets in total, this will actually show the list of tickets, right? Whether they're open, closed, whatever status you may have. You can see here at the top, you can filter it. So if you wanted to just see all of the open or all of the closed, you can surely do that. Then you can also see it if you're creating a new ticket for that person. This is really nice to me because you may have a customer who like calls in, someone creates a ticket, 10 minutes later, they call in again and a new person picks up the phone, right? They're going to come in here and think, hey, I need to make a ticket, but they'll actually be able to see that someone just did for that same type of issue. So this one, again, super useful just to be able to easily see any of the tickets in detail, again, compared against insights, where we're just going to see them at a summary level. Next one here is the ticket insights for Zoho Desk. So this plugin essentially is looking not at insights about the customer, but insights about a particular ticket. What we'll see here under the screenshots is over on the right, the ticket insights, be able to see how many threads have gone in and out. Right, an incoming thread is basically a communication from the customer. An outgoing thread is a communication to them. We can also see any like internal comments that we've left. And then down below, if you are using time tracking desk, which I recommend that you do, it'll actually show you the allocation of time between all of those different things that have occurred. Right, So we can see if there's a particular component of this that's taking a really long time. This plugin, I would say if a lot of your tickets are like they send in a request, 
we fix it, we reply, and it's done. You probably don't need this, right? But there are companies where a ticket is going to have a lot of back and forth. Maybe you need to loop in multiple different people to get it resolved. And that's where it can be really useful to start grabbing these high-level metrics about what exactly is going on in this ticket and how the time is being allocated, right? So that we can see, did something take up just a huge amount of time on this ticket? Maybe we can learn from that in the future. Next one is a ticket status lifecycle tracker. So this, if you're a CRM user, you might think, you know, this is kind of like a deal stage history, a lead status history. What this is doing is essentially tracking all of the times that the status of a ticket has updated. And it will show you how long it was in a particular status, as well as who updated it into and out of those statuses. So just an easy way to see like, what's the history here? Right. This is a good example in the screenshot that they show, like a ticket can go to open. We can think that it's been closed, but then something happens to open it back up and we're just able to see that history. Now, you might be thinking, well, this data does live in the timeline and the, the kind of full history log of the ticket. That's true. But everything else will also live in that timeline. So if you want just an easy way to be able to track each time that that status was updated throughout the life cycle of a ticket, this is a great way to do that. Next one is related tickets. So this is one that I've always been surprised doesn't have more positive reviews. This is a really useful plugin. What the related tickets is going to do is essentially give you a way to connect tickets to each other, right? So what it will do is essentially look at a custom field within a particular layout. So the way that I think about this a lot is I might have a custom field on a ticket for like the serial number of an item that I've sold to a customer, not the SKU, but the serial number of an item for that particular unit that a customer has. And if I activate the related tickets functionality and I use that serial number custom field, now all of those tickets can actually show as connected to one another. So I can see easily within a new ticket about, you know, item one, two, three, four, five, I can see there's actually all these other related tickets specifically about item one, two, three, four, five. So again, not everybody needs this. You do have to have something unique that you can enter or like that a form can enter about a particular ticket so that you are able to actually connect all of these. Again, you're just able to define that field, connect tickets based on it, and then easily see them when you're working within a ticket, seeing that full like maintenance history essentially of a particular item. Next one here is geolocation. Don't be fooled by the negative reviews here. I'll tell you why it got negative reviews in just a second. There's actually a pretty solid plugin. What this will do is essentially allow you to view locations of customers as well as agents, if you have that activated, on a map. And so if we take a look at some of the screenshots here, what you're really able to do is like connect that ticket to a customer. And now we would assume that customer is going to have an address on file in your system. And so from within here, we can see a couple different things. So we can look at like all of our tickets on a map. So it would actually kind of like drop pins for many different tickets. And then we can actually route ourselves to a particular ticket through this geolocation tool. Also works on the mobile app via the desk application. So you are able to do that. And you can actually share your location out through the application as like a user or an agent so that the management team or the you know the office can see exactly where you were, are in progress of getting to that uh, location. To those negative reviews, uh, the piece of feedback here is that you are going to need to have a Google API key set up via Google Maps. This is how most plugins like this are gonna work. In the CRM, there's a bunch of different Google address validation tools. Almost all of them are gonna require this. Really what you need to do is just set up a Google Maps account activate an API and give the key to Zoho as part of this process. The reason that it works that way is that each time that an address is checked, it basically uses like a credit on the Google Maps side. And Zoho does not want to pay for those credits, right? This is kind of a custom piece of functionality. And it's pretty normal that they're going to ask you to bring your own Google Maps API key to get this working. So again, don't be scared off by the negative reviews. If you're fine with creating a Google Maps key, this plugin works great and can be used for routing and general geolocation of those tickets. Next one here is kind of a quick one. It's just one that I like. This is just enabling followed tickets inside of Zoho Desk. So pretty simple one here. Really what you're able to do is within a ticket, say that you want to follow it, right? Which basically just means 
I'm interested in this ticket. Maybe it's something for like a really important customer or maybe it's something where a new user that's a little new to the company is working on something a bit more complicated and a manager just wants to say, hey, keep this one on my radar until I'm done tracking it. So what this does essentially gives you a little button where you can follow a ticket and then it will give you a new tab where all of those followed tickets are going to appear. Most of the time when people are looking for tickets, it's all based on ownership, right? It's like my open tickets or open tickets assigned to my team. This is just a way for like generally a management user to just track one particular ticket discreetly, regardless of who it might be assigned to, what status it's in, right? These are just all going to go into this master list where I'm able to see all of the activity on tickets that I have chosen to follow. Next one is ticket assignment. Again, this one is pretty slick. What it does is essentially add a new tab for ticket assignment with a couple other little categories here. And what the goal of this tool essentially is, is to be able to easily see and dynamically select tickets that are mine. So my open tickets, other people's open tickets, and all of the unassigned tickets. This is something that you can do on the tickets tab itself. If you set up some custom views and kind of use the dynamic filters there, this is just kind of a quick way to set up those filters if you don't want to, you know, monkey around in the settings there. And so what you can do is basically open up all of these tickets. You can do mass reassignments from one agent to another in here, which this is really one of the main things that I like about this. Like, let's say that in their example, star is going to be out of office. I can easily come in here find all the open tickets assigned to star, select them all and move them to somebody else, right? So it just kind of makes it easier to bump tickets around based on ownership. And it gives you that easy way to also see like, hey, I'm going to go through and assign tickets. I want to know who has the least, right? And so you're just able to use this more easily to filter down and determine what data should be moved to which user. Next one is broadcast email template for Zoho Desk. This is kind of a funky one, but if you have a lot of departments set up, this can be really nice. So longtime Zoho Desk users know, basically everything you configure in Desk is unique to a department. Everything from an email template to a workflow rule to a script or automation, all of those are built discreetly within one department. But a lot of the times there's going to be things like email templates that you'd actually want to have the same one in every department. It's really not worth your time to go and customize them uniquely for different departments and desk. What this will essentially allow you to do is create an email template and just send it out to all the departments at once. But so we look here like a perfect example is like when a ticket comes in, oftentimes you want to do that. Hey, your ticket has been created. We'll follow up soon. Right. And whether they're emailing your support department, your sales department or your billing department, you almost always want to send this type of auto response. And maybe you've done some branding to it. You put your logo, you put your brand colors, adjust the font and everything to get it to just look and feel consistent with your brand. Well, without broadcast email template, I would then have to go into each department one by one and set up that template again. All that this does is basically just give you a way to set up the template in one place and then push it out to one or multiple different departments. So just a usability thing. Again, you could get this done without this plugin. It just makes it a little quicker and easier. Um, one of the nice things here is too, is that you can use these for like templated auto responses or just like general templated emails that you want to make available for everybody on your team. So like some type of escalation email, some type of thank you email, a confirmation, right? Things like that, that multiple different teams might need access to rather than going one by one, just install this, set it up in one place and push it out to all the departments. Last one here is a minor one, but I do like it. And I did want to make this video 10 instead of nine. So I included this. This is just a quick one, again, built by Zoho that allows you to bookmark things and keep those bookmarks inside of Zoho Desk. You can bookmark anything from a ticket to a general URL. This is where I think this tool is interesting. Bookmarking tickets, realistically, I would probably follow them rather than bookmark them. But let's say you have like an external page that doesn't live inside of Zoho Desk that stores some information that's relevant for the support team. Well, they can bookmark it and then it will just stay right here inside of their view. And it will also make itself available as they are like working on tickets or working within the system. A minor one, not a game changer, nothing insane here, but it's free and it's there. 
and it was built by Zoho, so you know it's gonna work well inside of Desk, and you can go ahead and install it if you do have that use case. Again, the main one here I would say is something like this, right? Pulling in some external URL that's relevant for providing support and making it easy to access inside of Zoho Desk. So that's our rundown of the 10. Real interesting there, again, that all of these are just made by Zoho, right? These are deployed by them for their own application, but they put them here in the marketplace just to make sure that if you don't need them, you don't have to look at them, but all of them are free and available for you to install if any of them sounded useful for you. So with that, we can wrap up our video for today. As always, I want to thank you again for watching our video. If you found it useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below as that really does help us out. Make sure to leave any of those questions, feedback or video requests in the comment section below the like button as we do try to read and respond to as many of those as we can get to on a weekly basis. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.